Hello, welcome to Svelte in 15 minutes. We are going to install and set it up. We're going to talk about binding inputs, DOM events, conditional rendering, doing async requests, and iterating over data. data. So we're going to build a basic application where you can type in a search term uh, like cats or dogs, and then we'll search an API for some GIFs. We'll get them back. We'll display them on the page. Let's get started. So from the Svelte documentation, we can see here that uh, we use uh, Dejit, I think that's what it's called, to uh, generate an application. So let's do it. Uh, we can run this command, and then we name our application. So let's say um, getting started Svelte. Go. So if we go into that directory, what do we have? Uh, we have a rollup config, we have our package JSON, um, and we have all this other good stuff. So let's see what we have inside of there. If we look at our package JSON, um, we have a couple of scripts. So we have build, that's probably for when you're ready to deploy it to the world. Um, we have auto build, um, which watches the files and rebuilds. There's dev, and then there's the start script. Um, if we look at their documentation, yeah, it's saying run dev and that's how we'll have this like probably like auto refreshing server where as we change things the the browser will automatically refresh so we'll do npm run dev and it doesn't work because we need to install dependencies first um, i'm just going to use uh, p npm to install dependencies npm install it's similar to npm but it uh uses sim links locally instead of copying everything Cool, so we have it. Now we should be able to do npm run dev. Okay, so we have a dev uh, server on localhost 5000. There we go, we have our hello world. So let's take a look at the source code. Uh, we have our main.js. So this is bringing in our app component. Um, it's targeting the body of the document and it has a few props name, which is world. And if we look at our app.svelte, um, there is no syntax highlighting because I don't have the plugin installed in uh, VS Code. Let's install it. So we're going to search the marketplace. Uh, we have Svelte here. It has 24,000 downloads, five stars. This looks like the one to use. Let's install it. All right. And do we get syntax highlighting? There we go, we get syntax highlighting, cool. So your Svelte component is super simple. You have your script, that's where your JavaScript goes, styles, any custom styles that you may need, and then below that, the HTML that's actually gonna show up on the page. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so, and this thing is auto-refreshing, so if I change the, the color to green and save it, this page automatically refresh refreshes. We can see in the dev tools that it rebuilt the entire application um, to be served up. So that's great. Um, so the first thing we want to do is like bind an input. So what I want to do is like set up a form. So let's do this. We're going to say form. All right, what do we get? We get a simple form. That's great. I'm going to get rid of this H1 styling. Um, and so I want this input to be bound to some search variable so that as I type, it's getting updated behind the scenes. Um, so we're going to look at the docs. And if we look here at uh, text inputs, um, this is under bindings and examples. We can see that we have a variable called name, and then we can bind that value to the input and then display it right below. So here, instead of name, let's call this search. And then on our input, we want to bind it. We're going to call this thing search. Great. Uh, but now to see that it's actually working, let's just throw like an H2 right here that has the search value inside of it. So now as we start typing, this is bound to search. This references our JavaScript variable search. Uh, and actually, we'll, let's just initialize it to the empty string. And then um, here, it's going to display the latest value. So what we should get is as we type, hello world, we see that it's rendering out there down uh, below. So this is actually bound to that JavaScript variable search. That's great. Okay, so we can, we can keep track of that search value, but now we actually want to uh, try and send it somewhere so we can like make an API request. So that's great. We bound an input. Uh, next, let's set up uh, some DOM events. So I want to know when this form is submitted so that I can run some custom function. Um, so we're going to write a function like form submitted. Uh, most likely, it'll get access to the event. And then we'll go look at the docs because I've never done this before. I'm figuring this all out right now. Let's look at the docs. Uh, examples are cool. 
Let me look at um, events. DOM events. Here we go. So um, on an element, you can have like on some DOM event and you can point it at the name of a function. So that's kind of what I want to do, but I want to point it at my submit function. So on this form here, I'm going to say on submit, I'm going to call my form submitted function. Um, and this is JavaScript, so I'm guessing we're going to have to prevent the default action. Prevent default. Um, and for now, I'll just log... Uh, search because we want to get that that search variable um, You might be wondering what this export variable means. I believe that this is uh, our props But actually our app doesn't have any props So I'm just gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna get rid of the export as to not confuse It should all still work. So there we go. So now I have a submit event on the form um, I have this input which is bound to the search value and last thing I'll need here is a button which will actually submit the form. So let's add a button. Uh, we'll say like, go. Uh, and uh, this will have a type of submit. So when I click the button, it will submit the form, which should call this function and log my search variable. Let's see what happens. So if we search for cats and go, we get cats logged to the console. Awesome. So um, if we look at our README, so we're, we're handling DOM events, that's great. Uh, next up is conditional rendering. So what I want to do is as we're waiting for those cat GIFs to come back, I want to show like a loading message. So this loading message should only show if we are loading. So, so below the form, I'm going to have an image. Set the source equal to that. Why is it complaining? Uh, we should have an alt tag. We'll say alt is loading. What do we get? We get a nice little loading image, but I only want to show that loading image if we're actually loading. So um, if we look back at some examples here, let's look at uh, if blocks. So uh, in Svelte, you can have this if block to only show something if the expression here evaluates to true. So let's take that. Let's wrap our image in it. So I have that, and then we need our closing if. And um, we're not looking at user.logged in. Let's just have a variable called like loading. And so here in our JavaScript, we'll just say let loading equals false. So when the page loads, we're not loading. And so we shouldn't see that image. And so it's not there. But what we can do is inside of our form submitted is uh, right here, we'll just say loading equals true. And so when we submit the form, the uh, loading image should appear. So if we search for dogs and click go, there we go. It's loading, but now we need to actually make that API request. Okay, so I have this uh, Jiffy API, which allows you to pass in a search term like dogs, and then you get back a JSON response with all of the GIFs. So we're gonna use this API to make the request inside of our uh, form submitted function. Let's define a variable, let's just call it, um, let API, this, this can be a const, API URL. It's going to equal this thing, but it just won't have the query on the end there. And so uh, what we'll do is we will create a URL that's going to be um, the API URL uh, with the search term on the end. So whatever they typed in, we're going to put the search term on the end, which will search the API for that. Uh, and then we need to request it. So to request it, I'm just going to use uh, the built-in fetch function. So let's fetch that URL. Um, I'm going to make this an async function. So we can use like async await. Hopefully that works in Svelte. I don't actually know. So let's say uh, response is going to be await fetch. And then we'll say JSON is going to be await uh, response.json. And then let's just log the JSON. Okay, so let's search for cats. Go! Oh, there it is. Awesome. So it works. Um, but now we actually want to use this data. So we see we get this ba get back this big API response. Uh, really, I just want data, and I want to grab the information out of there. I want to grab those uh, GIFs. So um, let's get ourselves set up. So here in my in my JavaScript, I want a variable that's called like GIFs. We're gonna set that equal to let's just say like an empty array. And then when I get my data back, I'm going to set this to be the data that I got back. So here I'm going to say uh, gifs equals json.data. Um, really, I'm just going to map it. 
so we can just pluck out the the image that we that we want. Uh, so this will be GIF. So <laughs> let's grab that. Uh, so if I copy the property path, we can use that here. So this is going to be uh, GIF dot images dot fixed height dot URL. So I'm just plucking that property out of uh, every element in the data array and then putting it into this variable called GIFs. Uh, and so for now, we'll just log that GIFs array, which should just be a big array of URLs. Go. Okay, there we go. So we have one big array that has all the URLs inside of it. Now we need to iterate over it. So uh, we did conditional rendering with our loading message. Uh, we, we did an async request. And now we're going to iterate over the data. So for that, we are going to use uh, an each. So let's find it, each blocks. So each blocks allow you to iterate over uh, data. So in their example, they have a list, uh, an array of cats. Uh, in ours, we just have an array of um, image, image URLs. So we want to do something very similar. So here's what we'll do in our app here. Um, let's just have a like container div. Let's give it a class of like, we're going to define some CSS for it, but let's call it like results. Um, and then inside of it, uh, we're going to do uh, an image. But that image we need to repeat. So then we need our closing each. So we're going to say each. Uh, GIF, no, each GIFs as uh, GIF. So GIFs is going to reference this array, which we are setting after we make our request. Um, and GIF is going to be the name of each thing inside of it. So here I'm going to set source equal to uh, GIF. And then the alt text is going to be GIF. And let's see what happens. Okay, so we search for uh, cats. Go! And there they are! Uh, but you'll notice that the loading is still uh, displayed there, so we need to actually set it to false. So right here, I just need to say loading equals false. <clears throat> let's also give this uh, some basic styles. Yeah. So the element with ID results should have a column count of three. Um, and then uh, images should have a 100% width. Uh, automatic height. All right, moment of truth. So we search for cats. We click go, loading, and then we get all our cats. Nice. Um, if we search for dogs, go. It happens immediately. Um, what else can we search for? Kittens, go. There they are. Um, you'll notice that uh, you see the old result results before the new results. Like you see them for a split second. So let's search for uh, pandas. Um, you'll you'll notice that these cat images start turning into panda images, right? Um, but if we want all the data to load without seeing the old data, what, what we should do is when we make the request, we just need to reset the GIFs to be an empty array because that'll clear out all of the results. So if we search for pandas, nice. But if we search for kittens, yeah, you don't see that like image swapping out. You just see all of the new the new results. So that is basic, basic app with Svelte. Um, there's tons more that you can do, but this is just showing you some of the basic features of it. Um, I think one last thing that we'll do, I didn't have it on my list here, is let's uh, deploy the app. So a thing to note about this is uh, if we look at how we're actually running this application, um, it's using uh, this, this dev server, which is automatically building the files every time. But if we want to turn this into something that can actually exist on the interwebs, uh, we need to build it, which will generate all of the, the files needed um, to actually uh, be the application itself. And ultimately, it is what is like being run in the browser here. Like if we look at this bundle that it generates, this is the code that we're actually going to get whenever we uh, build the application. So let's do that real quick. So I'm going to kill the dev server. I'm going to do npm run build. There we go. Uh, and so it put it into the public folder. So if we go into public, 
Um, we have our bundles, we have our index. Uh, I'm just going to use um, HTTP server. So let's do npx HTTP server to just serve this file. So now instead of a dev server, I'm literally just loading the files the same way that a web server would load them. And then we can check them out on port 8080. Oh, um, I don't want to specify the file. I just want to do that. Okay. There we go. So um, I'm just starting up the basic HTTP server, but now it's running the, the built version of our application. So it should still work. Awesome. Uh, and if we look at the source for it, we see the bundle, but now it's all minified. Um, and this is awesome. So this is one of the great things about Svelte is all the, there is no runtime. There is no framework. Everything strips away. So this code right here, it's obviously minified. You can't read it very well, but this is all that is needed to run this very, very simple application. Um, if you were to build this same application with React or Vue, you would probably have this amount of code, but you would also have code uh, that is the, the React runtime or the Vue runtime itself with uh, virtual DOM diffing and, and different things like that. But this is one of the, the powerful things about Svelte is it generates such little code and such performant code. Um, okay, so that's our app. Let's just deploy it real quick so we can see it on the internet. I am using an older version of now. If you're using now, you're gonna have to set up like a package JSON, but there's our application on the web. We can search, it loads, it's beautiful. Um, but that was felt and it was super simple and I've never built an app before, but I was able to just wing it and build an app the same way that I would build like with Vue or React, but just has a little bit different syntax. Um, ultimately what's happening, um, the result of everything is, um, much cooler, I would say, <laughs> um, but it's super easy to get set up. We created the app, we made like a basic component. Um, you could get, go a lot further from here though. Um, right now we just have one component, um, but in larger applications, you probably want multiple components and nested components, and you would wanna pass data as props, and maybe you wanna manage state as well. You can do all of those things, um, but that's just a little bit more advanced. That has been Svelte. Thanks so much for watching.